Today I'll be showing you how to make your first Git repo with GitHub. We'll be going through all the steps to make a new repo and how to make our first commit. What I first want to discuss is what Git is versus GitHub because they are two separate things but work seamlessly together in order to keep track of code changes as well as keep that code backed up for you. So Git is a system that actually is used to track changes in source code with a type of version control. Basically, these are the tools that help you keep track. Whereas GitHub is a web-based repository, basically a storage server or cloud service that stores your code. Think of this as a hosting platform for your code. So now with that out of the way, we'll talk about how to use GitHub to actually store our code and keep track of things. Let's first start out by going to github.com logging in with our user and creating a new repo. If you are logged in as your user, as I am right now, you will be able to hit the new repo button and it will say owner, and then you get to type in your repository name. Since in the future, I plan on showing you how to use proper Git flow, I'm going to be calling this new repository Git flow. You can call it whatever you want. Basically just make sure that the repo name sums up the project that you're going to be working on. And if you wanna have some fun, well, you can check out the, the automatic generated names here from GitHub. Mine is animated robot this time. Anyways, you can also put an optional description in, such as showing the flow of Git and GitHub use, at least for my purposes. Then you can also select between public and private. Private just allows only you and members who you choose to see the repository commit and pull down the source code versus anyone in the public can actually pull that code down or see it, but they cannot commit without you choosing who can commit. Anyways, next, you can initialize the repo if you want with a readme file. I'm not gonna do that right now. You can also put in a git ignore file, which will ignore certain build directories and unnecessary files whenever you are compiling and committing code. This does help, so if you have a language that you're building the code in and it is listed in here, it might be a good idea to actually choose one of these. Since I'm gonna be doing this in C++ today, I'm just gonna choose the C++ template. Of course, you don't necessarily need this. You can always make your own git ignore file. Anyways, with that, I'm gonna hit create repository and ask you to smash that like button for me so more people can see the proper flow for creating a repo. The next thing we're going to do is actually clone down this repository that we just created. Notice how there's a git ignore file in our initial commit, and we're gonna add some code to it so we can actually see what the process looks like here. If we look underneath the branch, we do have a default branch now called main, fantastic, but let's get that code down. Anyways, make sure you go to code. I have HTTPS selected. I'm gonna actually copy this URL. If you don't have a repo to work with and you wanna try this for yourself, cloning things down to your local computer, you can just clone down my repository. This will be up for people to practice with. I'm not going to accept any commits, so don't make any commits to my current repo. The next thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have Git installed on whatever computer that you plan on keeping track of these changes on. So for example, here for Windows, you'd want the 64-bit Git Windows setup or if you have a 32-bit computer, you can use a 32-bit setup, doesn't matter. Anyways, after you go through all of this, if you're a Windows user, you'll wanna launch something called Git Bash. By default, Git on Windows does not actually register to the terminal or command prompt. So you'll want to launch this. And if you can type in Git and it tells you a bunch of stuff, that means you have it installed, fantastic. Otherwise, if you can't find Git Bash, you probably don't have things installed run a normal terminal and you do git, you'll notice that there is no recognized git command. That's because the environmental variables don't get quite set up right and your system isn't pointed to where the git tool is. So again, make sure to run in git bash if you're running on Windows to follow the next few steps. I'm gonna be showing you this in Ubuntu today. I'm gonna to launch a terminal in here since I find it easier to learn and use these tools on Linux instead. I'm here in my home users directory. Notice I have the home user directories, but I don't have my current repo down here. In order to get my current repo, I'm going to first need to install git on here, just like I showed to install it for Windows. Here I'll do sudo apt install git 
in order to get the proper tools and packages. I'll put my administrative password in and hit enter to say yes to downloading and installing Git. After it is installed, I should be able to run Git and look at that, getting a similar thing out here as far as helpful commands to run Git, but I know now that it is installed. Following that, I want to try and clone down my repository. I'm going to have to use that HTTPS URL that I copied from earlier. And there we go, HTTPS, mine's at github.com under my user, and it's called gitflow.git. So doing that, we'll actually clone down from the online repository. I'm just gonna draw a cloud. So currently that repo exists up in this cloud and it's getting pulled down to our local computer. So if we have a laptop or something, it is actually getting pulled down into this file system where it will exist for us to be able to keep track of things locally. And if we need to push back up to the online repo. All right, fantastic. We have a local copy now. Let's just see if we can find it. If I do LS, I notice there's a git flow. I need to actually go into that git flow directory. So I'm changing directories and now I'm in there. Notice there's nothing in here. Well, you might be asking yourself, how come there's nothing in here? Because there's the git ignore file from earlier. Well, that's because git ignore is a hidden file. So if I do LSAL, then I'll be able to see git ignore. Git ignore now exists as well as this git folder, which we won't talk about, but this helps keep track of some of their local repository information. But git ignore is one that has been made. You can use your favorite text editor to actually open that file up and see what's inside. I'm gonna do that actually. I'm gonna need a text editor to access it, so I'll just install Vim real quick. All right, with Vim, I'm just going to do git ignore. And in here, notice that we have this file that shows all the various different things that are going to be ignored in our repo. So what does that mean? That means if you add any of these types of extensions, they will be completely ignored by Git and won't be added when you push your changes or even add new files to the online repo. This is just because it keeps things very clean and lean up on the online repo in GitHub. That way you're not taking a bunch of space up and having to clone down huge repositories with unnecessary object files, pre-compiled files, compiled files, executables, all that fun stuff that should be built locally on your computer anyway. So that's why we chose that to use that git ignore file again. It's gonna be for whatever language that you selected. You can also create your own and ignore certain file types that you don't think are necessary to be actually pushed up to the online repo. But anyways, let's make our first change here locally so that we can practice making our first commit to the online repo. So I'm going to actually create a main.cpp file. And in the main CPP file, I'll just do like a hello world type of program in C++. So I will do an include of the IO stream library because I'm going to need it to say something to the console. And I'm going to put a int main function. And inside here, do two things, return zero and see out hello savvy people. This is my repo, colon there, and that should work. I'm going to confirm that that does work by doing, uh, let's see, do I have G++? Yes, I do, great, so I can compile G++ main, and I'm gonna output a file executable called main, and I did something wrong. Oh, that's right, forgot to tell it that this is part of the standard library. That should fix it, sure does. I'll do ls, and notice I have a new compiled file and I can finally do slash main to run. Fantastic. Hello savvy people. This is my repo. It does show up. Great. The program works as intended. Now I can actually push this change back to my main repo. So since this is the first time really setting things up, I'm not going to show you how to branch off and follow a proper git flow of creating branches and then merging branches into the main repo, which is typically what you're going to do. I'm going to show that in the next video because this is still setting up your initial repository between your local computer and the online hosted repo. With that being said, don't forget to subscribe below. Only about 5% of the 200,000 viewers that watch this channel on a monthly basis are actually subscribed. If you're enjoying the content, you might as well keep following up by subscribing and getting more Linux and programming content. And with that, let's now try adding the changes we've made. So I'm just gonna do git add and I'm gonna do star, that means add everything, right? So if I do that, it's gonna add all my changes in, which 
I don't necessarily suggest doing this typically, but since it's a brand new repo, I want all my changes to be made anyway. So you would think that would add both this main and main CPP file, right? We're gonna do git status and check, and sure enough, it did. Well, this is actually a no-no because I don't want main to show up because it's an ex executable that I built and that's not something you wanna actually save and store inside of the main repo online. So what I can do is I can do this git restore file. So I just do that and I'm gonna do staged and then I'll do file, the file name, or I can do all, which will reverse the entire added files. So notice how they're in red now, so they're not tracked files. Anyways, you can also add individual files, which I'll show you how to do this time. I'll just do git add and then actually specify the exact file that I wanna add. You can also, you know, if you have multiple extensions or something like that, you could do stars, wherever. But anyways, I know it's called main.cpp. That's the one I'll add. And git status is your friend. Use it, make sure that you're looking at what's actually getting added to your repo. And it gives you a lot of information like which branch you're on, aka main right now, and if your branch is up to date with the current branch online, and it says it is. Anyways, I staged this main CPP file. So the next thing I need to do is write a little message so that others in the repo are familiar with what I'm going to commit. So in order to do this, I can do git commit and then dash m for message. And my message is gonna be whatever I want that represents the work that I've been doing. So I'm gonna say added in a main CPP file with greeting. Fantastic, I press enter. And now I have a problem. And the problem here is this current local repository does not know who the user is that's trying to use the repository and make a commit. Therefore, we have to put in some information here in order to actually be able to commit and push our code changes. So the way I like to fix this is actually by doing the following and not filling this information in quite yet. Instead, we'll need a personal access token that we create on GitHub first, and then we'll run the following command. But let's first go create that access token. So back on GitHub, I'm gonna to go to my user and I'm gonna to go to setting. Go down until you see developer settings, and then you'll notice these three things. Now, in the personal access token, you can create a classic token or a fine grain token. Doesn't really matter which, but you're gonna generate a new token. When you generate a new token, you'll make a note of the token, so some token, whatever you wanna describe it as, some sort of a note, and then put an expiration in for this token. I just put mine for seven days and I'm going to select the repo so I have full control of private repositories. The rest of this, you can kind of look through and decide whether or not this user who has this token needs these other types of access. I know mine doesn't. I hit generate token and I'll get a new token. Anyways, I'm, I'm not gonna show you my token, but you need to copy the token and paste that in because you're gonna be using it here soon. Okay, so now in order to connect our token to our local repo, we need to do git remote. We're gonna do set URL and we're gonna type in origin and then do HTTPS colon slash slash, put our GitHub token in here. I'm just gonna paste that in and then I'm gonna do at github.com followed by a slash. I'm gonna put my username in so for me, Savvy Nick, and the repository name that I'm working on, so mine was called Git Flow. You're gonna enter in whatever yours is and then follow that up with .git. Press enter after that, and that should connect things up between your local repo and the online repo. So now let's try committing again. So I'll redo my git commit message and press enter. It says it still doesn't know who I am. Well, that's because we don't have the local info set up. I'm just going to copy paste, and then put in my email I wanna use, like so. And then I'm gonna put the name I wanna use as well by again copying and just putting in a name you wanna use. This doesn't really matter because the last thing we did was actually what connects information between the local and main repo. This just kinda of gives some information of who's using the repo locally. Anyways, we're gonna try committing once more and look at that, this time everything worked out. If you did it opposite, you're probably gonna get an error where it says you're not authenticated and you can't log in. That's where you have to generate your token and the previous setup process with the Git remote set URL origin. But I do quickly wanna talk about learning more about Linux. If you do wanna learn about Linux, since it can be hard to understand, I've taken the most commonly used terms and commands and subjects in Linux 
and broke them down into simple to read documents, including a Linux term sheet, a checklist, and cheat sheet, all on learn.savvynick.com. Go check it out today to access those sheets and level up your knowledge of Linux. Back to this, we'll go and do pretty much the final step here. So we've added our file, we've made a commit message, we've linked up our user and the user token. Finally, let's do git push. This is going to take the changes that are currently locally stashed and push them into the online repository. If we do that, we shouldn't get any errors. And sure enough, everything went through. Now we can go back to GitHub and check if things are synced up between our local repository and our main repository. So what we should see are two things. If I do git status, there should really be no changes and it should say there is nothing added to commit, but untracked files presented meaning these are files that aren't part of our commit, but there is no main.cpp anymore. Fantastic. And if I load up my online repo, notice that there's a main.cpp file. Fantastic. You have officially created your first online repository on GitHub with Git through a terminal. You should have been able to follow this through Windows or on Linux. Fantastic work. You're now ready to learn more about Git flow with my next video. That's a guide to using Git effectively and what the cycle of using Git with GitHub actually looks like after you've created your main repo, which you now successfully have. Fantastic work. If you enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.